welcome back. This is Rakesh Nair. Today we are going to talk about equivalence of context-free grammar and stone pattern. But before we start a small information, I like to say in this channel we produce every video in two different languages. If you want to watch this video in Hindi, kindly follow the link given in the description. And if you have not yet subscribed, please subscribe and press the bell icon so that you will get regular updates from this channel. So let us start. Basically, when we talk about equivalence of context-free grammar and PDA, there is a theorem which says a language is context-free if and only if some PDA recognizes it. It means what? For a given context-free grammar, we need to have a PDA that's supposed to recognize and if a PDA is given, there is a context-free grammar that recognizes this particular language. So let us see the first part today. It means what? If a context-free grammar is given, let us say the grammar is defined in this way that S derives 0 A A, A derives 0 S or 1 S or 0. Then I want to design a pushdown automata that will recognize the string generated by this particular grammar. But before that, we must know about the leftmost derivation because we are going to use the leftmost derivation while using pushdown automata. So, a leftmost derivation is obtained by applying production to the leftmost variable in each step. If you don't remember, just let me recall. The starting symbol is 0AA and its leftmost variable is A. For A, I can substitute 1S. Here in this particular string S is again the leftmost. Again for S I want to substitute 0 A A. In this again A is the leftmost. For A I can write 0 and after that A is leftmost. For this A if I substitute 0 again the last A is left out. This is the leftmost. So for this A if I substitute 0 I will get the string 0 1 0 0 0 0. I hope I know you understand what is the leftmost derivation. Now let us see the steps that we are going to adopt in order to convert a context-free grammar to, to push down automata. The first step that we need to do is we need to convert the given production of context-free grammar into Grayback normal form or GNF. The next step is the PDA will only have one state at the beginning. Let it be Q0 and the transition that I will perform is delta of Q0 epsilon epsilon equal to Q1 SZ. It means Q0 is the initial state, epsilon is the input symbol and the second epsilon is the stack symbol. If this is the situation, I will go to the next step that is Q1 and I will push SZ0. It means first I will push Z0 onto the stack and then S. It means S will be on the top of the stack. And this S is nothing but the initial or the starting symbol of the context-free grammar. Next what we are going to do, we are going to repeat these steps until 2B or C reached. The first thing that what we will do is, what is there at the top of the stack. If the stack symbol is a non-terminal symbol, then add the following rule. It means delta of QI a A equal to Q J A X. Here small a is input symbol and capital A is the stack symbol. So you are looking at the stack symbol A and if you are having a production of this form A derived A X then you pop A and push A X onto the stack. It means A will be at the top of the stack. The next thing is if that stack symbol is a terminal symbol and the stack symbol matches with the input symbol, then what we are going to do? We are going to pop it. Delta of QI AA equal to QJ epsilon. You can say 
this a is the input symbol and this a is the stack symbol when both of them are matching then we are going to pop it and go to the next input symbol and if it doesn't match then we cannot design this push down automata if the stack symbol is z0 and the input symbol is epsilon then we will write delta of q i epsilon z0 equal to q f epsilon here q f is the final state it means if epsilon is the input symbol and z0 is the top of the stack then i will be popping z0 from the stack and i will go to the final state let us see the important step one by one and then we will go to the example so let us say the second step what it is saying then the PDA will only have only one state and at the beginning epsilon is the input symbol and epsilon is the top of the stack then I will be going to state Q1 and pushing SZ0 into the stack the starting symbol is Q0 epsilon is the input symbol epsilon is the stack symbol and I want to push SZ0 into the stack so S will be at the top of the stack the next thing is 3a the stack symbol is a non-terminal symbol we have to follow the rule delta of qi a a equal to qj a x if a derived a x is a suitable production p now you can see s is a non-terminal symbol which is at the top of the stack and the input symbol is zero so what i am going to do i am going to find the production that is starting with s we are having s derived 0 a a what i am going to do is i will pop it and push the right hand side of the production onto the stack in a reverse order it means i am having 0 a a the first alphabet that i will push is a which is rightmost then i will come to the next a and then 0 i will be pushing onto the stack you can see here 0 is the input symbol s is the top of the stack so i want to push 0 a a it means I am popping S, then pushing the last A. Next, I am going to push the next A available from the right hand side. And next, I will put the leftmost alphabet that is 0. So, in this way, 0 will be at the top of the stack. The next thing is, if the input alphabet and the stack matches. Here you can see 0 is the input symbol and 0 is at the top of the stack. So what I am going to do, I am going to pop which is there at the top of the stack and go to the next alphabet for scanning. So next I will be scanning the next symbol that is 1. So these are the three important concepts that you need to understand before applying this particular theorem. Let us do an example. Let us try to derive the string 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. And the grammar given to me is this one. So the first alphabet I am having is epsilon. I am talking about this epsilon. What I am going to do? I am in state Q0. And I will go to state Q1. And I will push SZ0. At the top of the stack I will be having S. Now you can see the third state. Now at the top of the stack we are having a non-terminal symbol. And the next symbol that we are going to track is 0. So as it is a non-terminal symbol, what we are going to do? We are going to pop the non-terminal symbol and push what is there on the right hand side of the appropriate production. So S is popped out and instead of that I am going to push A which is there on the right hand side. Next one more A which is there in the middle and then the leftmost alphabet here is 0. So 0 is at the top of the stack. Now you can see 0 is the input symbol and 0 is at the top of the stack. As the input string 0 and the top of the stack is matching, we are going to pop it off. So when we pop, we can write we were there at state Q1. We will go to state Q2 on the transition 0, 0 arrow epsilon. After that we are going to take the next symbol that is 1. Now you can see top of the stack contain A. So what we are going to do? If 1 is the input symbol and A is at the top of the stack, we are going to pop A 
and instead of that i am going to insert an appropriate production so i can insert one s onto b so i'll be popping a and instead of that i'll be first pushing s and then i'll be pushing one so now one is at the top of the stack now you can see one is at the top of the stack and one is the input symbol so we are going to pop the symbol which is there at the top of the stack now you can see zero is the input symbol and s is at the top of the stack so what you are going to do we are going to pop this non terminal which is available in the stack and push the right hand side of the production instead of this we are going to push a a and zero now you can see zero is at the top of the stack and zero is the input symbol so what we are going to do we are going to pop the zero which is there at the top of the stack so we will be popping it out and go to scan the next alphabet the next alphabet is again a zero now at the top of the stack you are having a and the input symbol is zero as it is a non terminal need to substitute a appropriate production so the appropriate production i am having is a derives zero so i'll pop this a and push right hand side of the production onto the stack so at the top of the stack i'll be having zero now the zero at the top of the stack and zero at the input symbol both matches so that's why i am going to pop it out the next input symbol is one more zero and at the top of the stack we are having a so we are going to pop this a and push the right hand side of the production that is zero to be pushed onto the stack now you can see zero is the input symbol and zero is at the top of the stack so i am going to pop the zero from the stack so this is the production that i am doing right now again i will go to scan the next input symbol it is again a zero so here also i'll pop a and push the right hand side of the production that is zero now you can see zero and zero matching that's why i can pop the top of the stack now the input symbol is epsilon and the top of the stack is z not so i am going to pop the z not from the stack and go to the final stack you can see this is how we are going to generate our pda from a given context free graph i hope you understood this if you understood give me a like and share among your friends in our next video we are going to talk about how to convert pda to context free graph see you then take care bye